Hello guys and gals and welcome. Welcome to uh, my first ever episode of um, Uniques. So this particular episode, as you can see, uh, hopefully by the big graphic in the top left hand corner, um, is about unique rings and amulets. Um, now of course there are a lot of uniques in the game. There are unique boots, unique helmets, unique gloves, you know, you, there's there are unique belts. And, and But this particular episode is going to be about the rings and, and the amulets. Um, not only uh, we're going to go over each individual ring and amulet, but we're also going to talk about where you can find them. Now, the first ring we're going to start out with is a very easy one. Um, it is probably one of the ones that people find the most, um, but also one of the ones that people throw away the most. Um, namely because of the magic find variants. So the Nagel ring can actually vary uh, between 15 and 30%. 30% would be a perfect Nagel ring. Um, and in general, um, the 30% rings are very sought after. Uh, because you can obviously equip two of them. Two of them is 60% magic find. And uh, you could tag that along with a, a gull dagger. And at level 7, you'd be rocking a 160% magic find with just those three items. Um, now, of course, perfect nagels aren't that easy to come by. Um, but nagel rings are. And so you might have like a 29% or a 25% or whatever. Um, most people have who have played Diablo for a while have found at least one or two nagel rings. Uh, probably more than that. And, um, you know, just in general, a very nice ring for early on. Get you those um, those early level uniques, the rares and whatnot, that'll, that'll make your self-found build actually, you know, worthwhile. Um, the next ring on our list here is a ring that, um, rather ironically, um, is probably the frustration of uh, many magic finders um, because when you are magic finding um, it of course a unique ring when it drops can be anything it can be any of these unique rings if you're killing like hell diablo or something and a unique ring drops or you're killing hell uh, and dariel and our unique ring drops you know it can be any of these rings but more often than not it is a mantled heel um, and don't get me wrong a mantled heel is actually a very nice ring especially for a low level but um it's not the ring that people want to see when they hit that identify scroll on the uh, on the ring. They want to see something much better. So, what makes the metal heal a good ring? Well, it's life. It's a mana steal early on, um, and it's also mana regeneration early on. So it's a twenty percent mana regeneration. Um, you can stack two of those, and you can get forty percent mana regeneration on pretty much any character that needs it, like uh, you know early game sorceresses. Uh, maybe a elemental druid, um, maybe a bone spear necromancer because they're going to be spamming. Um, you know, just basically any character that needs that mana regeneration, and of course the mana steel, which is going to be good on just about any melee character. And um, you don't really have to worry too much about this ring. You just kind of put it on, and you just you just wait until you find something better. Um, you know, the twenty to life and the replenish eight uh, definitely doesn't hurt either. Because, um, you know, if you stack two of them, you got 20% regeneration mana, 20 to, 20 to life, 20 to life, so that's 40. And then you got 16 regen, um, and you're looking at 14% mana steal. If you run if you run two of these, your mana problems should be over for a little while until you find some other type of, of uh, solution. And, of course, it's level 15, so you're going to outgrow it. Um, you know, by the time you hit 30 or 40 or whatever, you may have something much better to put in those uh, those slots. Now, our next ring is actually one that used to be a currency for Diablo 2. So for a very long time in Diablo 2, believe it or not, you could actually trade these for items. So hey, let's say somebody had a, uh, a wind force, um, and you wanted to trade somebody for a wind force, and they would say, oh, well, I'll give you a wind force for four soges. Um, and you'd be like, no, I'll only give you three. And I'm like, oh, no, I want four for this, and I'm not going to take one soge less. You know, silly stuff like that. Um, and as you can see, they're very good rings. Plus one to all skills, and you can obviously stack two of those, so that's plus two to all skills if you stack them. Um, it's got lightning damage, which is hardly the greatest in the world, but any damage added on to your what you got is nice. Um, 20 to mana, so you got 40 mana. And then on top of that, they give you increases your maximum mana by 25%. 
which means that you're getting even more than 20 to mana. So, you know, like for instance, if you already had, let's say, uh, 40, and then each ring is giving you 20, so that's 20, 20, so that's another 40, so you're at 80, and then you have a plus 50% from two rings, so you're looking at uh, another 40 on top of that. So, you know, it, it's, it, it stacks up very quickly. Um, now, these rings are great for uh, any character that has um, you know very skill based damage um, of course they're good for just about any character to be honest because who doesn't like plus to all skills but there are certain characters that get more of a benefit from soldiers than others um, i would say sorceresses especially sorceresses that use um, energy shield um, they're going to get a huge benefit in what is essentially hit points to them because that increase to maximum mana and the mana is going to just balloon out their mana pool so that their energy shield is that much more awesome now, the next ring on the list, um, actually, I forgot to talk about Mandled Heal's uh, variance. Um, it's not really that important, but Mandled Heal has a pretty high variance on its mana steal. Um, so it goes from 4 to 7, so you can get a pretty crappy Mandled Heal. Um, you know, if I had to choose between 4% mana steal and 7, I'm definitely going to choose 7. And um, it's not like a huge difference. But I would definitely say that a perfect mantle heal is a little bit more interesting than one that has the the suckier stats, like the four percent mana steal and the uh, only five replenish life. Although the replenish life isn't really the the greatest thing in the world. Uh, Variants on Stone Ring of Jordan there actually is none. So the uh, Stone Ring of Jordan um, has no variance whatsoever on any of its its stats. So the next ring that we're going to talk about. Um, is the Dwarf Star Ring, which comes in at level 45. Um, so the Dwarf Star Ring actually has a pairing, um, and we'll talk about both of these together, because why not? That's uh, the Raven Frost Ring. So the Dwarf Star and the Raven Frost are both level 45, and they both have a very specific um, focus. So as you can see, the Dwarf Star Ring has a Fire Absorb on it, uh, as well as Heal Stamina, Life, Maximum Stamina, so it's very focused around um, fire and you know like hit points um, whereas the raven frost ring is very focused around cold so it's, it's a cold absorb ring cannot be frozen um, you've got plus to mana plus to dexterity cold damage attack rating um, these two rings are actually absolutely amazing if you use them in concert uh, because the fire absorb obviously makes you very immune to fire so if you were to already be rocking say you know, 75 or 80 percent, depending on how you've got your resistances set up. Um, you know, you're going to absorb fire at that point, which is actually going to, um, you know, to heal you. Um, and then you also have over here, you got Raven Frost, which has cold absorb 20 percent, and then it also comes with the cannot be frozen. So both very sweet, um, sweet rings in terms of their individual elemental ability. Um, I would definitely say that like. If you were just a rich character and you you wanted to carry around these two rings, I could see that being an, an easy thing to do. Um, they're just taking up two little tiny slots. And if you ever come across a monster that is, you know, extremely ice-based and you just want to throw this on just for some extra security, or if you come across a monster that's extremely fire-based, um, you know, these, these two right here would be nice. Um, the Dwarf Star has 100% extra gold for monsters too, if you happen to want to build like a extra gold from Monsters Barbarian. Um, I've heard uh, quite a few people do that. And then the Ravenfrost has a really amazing amount of attack rating too, which you know could come in handy if you're one of those characters who needs um, a boost to his attack rating. Um, you know, like maybe you're a a bow sorceress <laughs> and you're using enchant. Um, you know, and you got yourself a demon uh, demon machine Chukonu. You know, maybe that's your thing, and you need that extra 250 attack rating. You know, that'd be great. Add some cold damage on there. Give you some cannot be frozen, whatnot. You know, it, it'll help out. It even's got dexterity on it too, so it's going to give you even more attack rating. Um, just really nice rings all around. Um, I would definitely say that there are other alternatives um, at level 45. You know, you're you may not have anything else though, so you know, one of these might be your your go-to ring. Um, so let's go ahead and put those in the order. The next ring we're going to talk about is the Bull Cathos Wedding Band. Um, so the Bull Cathos Wedding Band is plus one to all skills as well. 
a lot like the Stone Ring of Jordan, except it's level 58. So much later in the game, level 29 versus level 58. Although it, you can get to level 60 fairly quickly if you rush your character through. Um, if you're not rushing your character through, you know, this is going to take you a little while. Uh, so obviously, whereas the Stone Ring of Jordan seems much more focused on a mana class, you know, it has plus to mana, it has increased maximum mana. You know, so it's a very, like, mana-focused ring. Um, the Bull Cathos Wedding Band seems to be the opposite. So as you can see here, it's plus one to all skills, and it's 5% lifesteal, which is great for a melee class. Um, and it has plus to life based on character level, as well as plus to maximum stamina. Now, the plus to life based on maximum um, health goes from 0 to 49 at level 99. So at level 99, you're talking about 49 extra health. Um, so it's, it's going to vary a lot based on your level. So obviously, you have to be level 58 to use it. So it's most likely going to be somewhere around 20... I'm trying to think here. Because it's basically about a half a point a level. Um, because at level 49, you're talking about, that's basically half of 99. Um, so, later. So, level 58 times 0.5. So, you're looking at 29 health at level 58, and then that's going to scale up as you increase the level. Um, the lifesteal isn't... Um, static. It go, does go from 3% to 5%, so 5% would be perfect. Um, none of the other stats are variable. Um, so a, a good ring for maybe like a Barbarian or a Zeal Paladin or you know, like a Fury uh, Druid, things like that. Um, anything that, I mean, everybody loves plus all skills, don't get me wrong, um, and people would rock Stone Ring of Jordans if that's all they had. Um, but, you know, if you had to choose between a Stone Ring of Jordan and a Bull Cathos Wedding Band, um, you're going to make that choice depending on, like, do I use mana or do I need lifesteal or, you know, what is, um, what is my specific requirement? Um, the next ring on our list is actually the Carrion Wind. So as you can see, the Carrion Wind has quite a few modifiers here. No plus skills, unfortunately. But it does have a 10% chance to cast level 10 Poison Nova when struck. Um, an 8% chance to cast level 13 Twister on striking. Um, which could do some significant amount of damage. Um, especially if you're a very fast cast character. 9% uh, lifesteal, which is a fairly high number. Um, defense first and missile, which is uh, it's really an, a non-important stat. I mean, most people don't bother with it. Um, you got Poison Resist, which is 55%. Uh, very, very high number there. Uh, of course, this, this is a carrion, you know, poison ring, essentially. So that's why you have the Poison Nova and the Poison Creeper and the Poison Resist. That's just how they've made this ring. It's a, it's a theme, you know what I mean? Um, it's level 60 to use, so obviously it's even higher than the Bull Cathos Wedding Band. Um... The charges on the Poison Creeper, I believe, can be recharged by using the Herodric Cube. Don't quote me on that, though, because I've never tried it on a unique item. I've always tried it on, like, uh, rares and whatnot. Um, it has 10% damage taken goes to mana as well, which is useful if you're getting hit a lot. Um, I would assume that you're getting hit if you're using this ring, because the 10% chance to cast Poison Nova when struck is a you know not going to be useful unless you're getting hit. Um, so it might be good on a melee character who's in the thick of it a lot, who, who intends on being hitten, hit, uh, hitten, like I said, kitten, uh, and, and, you know, and then the 9% lifesteal also implies a melee character. Um, so, you know, just in general, maybe, um, maybe a good ring for a rabies druid. That could be interesting. Uh, next on the list, we have nature's peace. Um, nature's peace is sort of revolving around the idea that, um, you know, things that die should die. You know, there's no, there shouldn't be any, like, reviving of monsters and bringing things back from the dead and stuff like that. So here we have slain uh, monsters rest in peace, and we have prevent monster heal, um, which prevent monster heal is actually pretty amazing for um, 
killing the regeneration of a monster. It doesn't work on uh, Ubers, I don't think. And there's certain monsters that it doesn't work on. But for the majority of monsters in the game, um, if you hit them with this, it kills all their regeneration. Which in its itself is sort of a form of damage. Because if you're trying to kill a monster and the monster is regenerating, um, then you have to overcome that regeneration. So if you can stop that regeneration completely, then that's almost a form of, of damage in your favor. Uh, and it has 30% poison resist, uh, damage reduced by 11, which isn't going to help you out a ton. Um, and then it has the level 5 Oak Sage charges, which Oak Sage is a uh, boost to your HP. Um, you know, you could use that um, if you plan on running an entire act. Obviously, I wouldn't use that if you were just doing magic find runs, hopping in and out of games. But he, but the Oak Sage will last quite a while as long as you don't um, you know, like abandon it and get it killed. They don't fight or anything, and... Um, they tend to avoid combat, so you really have to try to get the Oak Sage killed. Um, and of course, this Nature's Piece is level 69. So as we go forward here, we're going higher and higher and higher on the list. Um, this is the last unique ring, and it is the highest level one at level 67. Or sorry, 76. <laughs> How do I read that backwards? Um, and it has 10% chance of casting level 16 Lightning on Striking. Uh, lightning absorb 20%. So this is sort of the um, sister ring to the dwarf star and the raven frost. As you see, we got the fire, and then we got the cold, and now we have the lightning version. Um, now the wisp protector is much much higher level, and it's probably going to be a little bit harder to find. So we have our 10% uh, chance to cast 16 lightning on striking the lightning absorb. We've got better chance of magic items, and then on top of that, we got a whole bunch of little. Um, charges here. So we got level 7 Spirit of the Barbs, probably not going to be very useful ever. Um, you got level 5 Heart of the Wolverine, which could be useful to a melee class. And then level 2 Oak Sage isn't really going to give you that much HP, but it's something, I suppose. Um, and 15 charges of that. Uh, level 2 Oak Sage I think is like 40% HP, or 30% HP. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure on that one. Right, so that pretty much covers our rings. And uh, now we're going to move into the amulets. So let me go ahead and uh, close out my my rings here so I can get to my amulets. And we're going to start with the lowest level amulet on the list, which is the Nozakin Relic. Um, there's a pretty good chance you'll find a Nozakin Relic at some point um, because it is such a uh, low level item. And you'll notice that it has some very nice effects. 20% um, faster hit recovery is great for just about everybody. Um, it is just nasty when you get stuck in a hit recovery loop. And um, I just don't understand why, you know, you wouldn't want at least a little bit of hit recovery so that in those situations where you, you, you know, you're getting hit by multiple monsters that you can actually get out of those situations because the hit recovery will help you with that. Because, um, you know, your character, when you get hit, your character's got to go, Ugh! and then come back, and then you can move again. Well, if you're getting hit by multiple monsters, you're like, Ugh, uh, 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 and you can't, you can't go anywhere. So, hit recovery, great. Um, at level 10, 3 to 6 fire damage is actually great. Uh, obviously, it's not going to help you out very much late game. But at, at level 10, 3 to 6 fire damage is actually enough to punch something to death. Um, and then we have our 10% maximum fire resist and fire resist 50%. So those two go in tandem. So as you can see here, if you had a Nozakin Relic, you could build your fire resist to 90%. Of course, you'd have to tack on at least 40% other fire resist from other items, uh, charms, etc. Um, and then the light radius, I'm not going to lie. Light radius is actually kind of nice to have early game because your light radius is so small. Late late game, you know, like when you're when you're higher level, you have light radius on random pieces of equipment that you don't really want, but it's there, and it just kind of builds up, and your character can see everything. But early game, like you're in catacombs level two, and you're trying to see, and your character can only see like two feet around itself because your light radius is so small. It's kind of nice to have some light radius. The next amulet on our list is the Eye of Elich. Um, so the Eye of Elich is a very early. Uh, amulet with plus to all skills, um, two to five cold damage, which again at level 15 is not bad. Uh, Seven percent life seal, so great for a melee character. Um, and then it has freezes target plus 10. Um, so freezes target is a very interesting um, effect. It's not cold damage. It's actually um, a so cold damage causes a target to slow down. 
Um, it doesn't cause them to stop completely. Freeze's target causes them to completely stop. So Eye of Elich is a great amulet for anyone who wants to grab um, you know, some freezing effect and build that into their character. And um, from what I understand, the Freeze's Target Plus actually also stacks on with other freezing effects. So if you happen to have a... Um, what would it be called? If you happen to have a character that uses a freezing attack, um, like Amazon's Frozen Arrow or um, Glacial Spike... Um, from what I understand, this sort of adds to that freeze as well, which is helpful. Um, and then we have 40 defense versus missile, which early on might, might actually be useful when you get to act two and you round one of those corners and all those burning dead start spamming arrows at you and there's literally like 400 arrows coming your direction. I mean, hey, it might actually be useful at level 15. Um, and of course, they threw on some plus five to light radius, which is going to just brighten up your whole screen. Now, next we have the Mahim Oak Curio Amulet. Um, and the Mahim Oak Curio Amulet is very interesting because it has a bonus percentage to attack rating, um, which is very nice. So it's not a straight flat number. So whatever your attack rating is, it's just going to stack on 10% right on top of that. Great for any character that uses melee or ranged. 10% um, enhanced defense, so again, it's just going to stack on a straight 10% on top of that, and it's also going to give you 10 defense uh, to help out your defense, um, which again is also going to be affected by that 10%, so it might as well say 11. Now we also have plus 10 to all attributes, which again is going to give you some more defense, it's going to give you some more attack rating. Um, and just in general, you notice that the, the, the kind of theme here for the Mahim Okakuryo is it kind of enhances all of your stats and abilities, um, your attack rating, your defense, your strength, your, you know, you know, your, your energy, your mana, your, your health. Um, and then of course it also gives you plus 10 to all resistances too, because why not? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. All right. So the next amulet on our list is the Saracen's Chance, uh, level 47. The Saracen's Chance has a 10% chance to cast level 2 Iron Maiden when struck, which is kind of interesting. Um, 12 to all attributes and all resist 25. I'd say just in general, this amulet is probably going to be looked at mainly for the all resistances 25, as when you get into Nightmare and Hell difficulties, all resists become sort of sought after. Um, it's not really something that a lot of people are going to choose over a plus to skills amulet, but... Um, you know, it's, it's really going to be up to uh, the individual person. Now, there is no, I forgot to say, there is no variance on the uh, Mahim Oak Curio. Um, it's always going to be 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Um, the Eye of Elich does have some variance. It is 3 to 7% on the lifesteal, um, and the cold damage can vary as well. Um, and the cold duration can actually vary as well. So it can be anywhere between 2 plus 2 to plus 10. So you know, look out for a perfect Eye of Elich. That would also be something interesting to find. Um, the Saracen's Chance actually has a variance on its all resist between 15 to 25. So you can find one that's not quite as great. Um, there's really not a lot to say about this amulet. It's a good all resists amulet. Um, but of course you can find a crappy version of it with only plus 15 um, and you might have something better just laying around. Of course, not one that's going to give you plus 12 to all attributes, but, um, you know, that's that's up to you. Um, the next one on our list is the Cat's Eye. Um, the Cat's Eye has 30% faster run and walk, which is interesting. Um, could be an alternative if you're having trouble finding faster run walk, or maybe you're someone who can't um, use... You're, you know, you're using specific boots that don't have faster run walk on them, and you just want to have some... Um, it also gives you IAS, which is something that's very sought after. 20% increased attack speed. Um, 100, just straight addition to your defense. 100 defense versus missile. And then 25 dexterity, which in turn is also going to give you more defense, um, as well as more attack rating. Um, an interesting amulet. Um, probably at level 50, you've got better, better alternatives by now. But if you're running a uh, maybe a self solo self found build, this might be something that you'd uh, you'd put on, especially if for that 25 dexterity, if you want to um, to use a particular weapon, it might be your way of getting that dexterity without having to blink those points in. Um, next on our list is the 
Crescent Moon amulet. The Crescent Moon amulet has 15% mana steal and 6% life steal with 45 to mana. So you can, as you can see already, just by those first couple, it seems to be very focused on mana. Um, as well as it has damage, magic damage reduced by 10 and damage taken goes to mana. Um, so a very mana-centric amulet, but more focused around a character who is using mana through attacks and not necessarily mana through spells. Um, so, you know, this might come in handy for someone like a Chavazon, um, or a, um, you know, a ha no, not a Hammered in, sorry, um, a Vengeance it in, perhaps, um, someone who's, someone who's spamming a skill that costs a lot of mana, um, that's actually a melee attack. And of course, the damage taken goes to mana also infers that you're going to be hit, because that's going to help your mana pool as well. I'm not sure exactly what character would have such an intensive mana requirement that would need 15% mana steal, 10% damage taken goes to mana, extra mana. Um, but, I mean, it also has life steal on it too, so I guess that would free up one of your ring slots, or maybe be allowed you to use a weapon that doesn't have mana steal on it. So moving on to our next amulet, we have Atma's Scarab. Um, Atma's Scarab is level 60. Uh, actually, before we move on to that one, let me just double check real quick here. So the um, the mana variance on the Crescent Moon is 11 to 15%, um, and the lifesteal variance is 3 to 6. Um, that Those are the only two things on that that do vary. Um, and the variance on the Cat's Eye is nothing. So the Cat's Eye is always going to be 30, 20, 100, 125. Sorry, I don't know why I keep forgetting to uh, talk about the variances. So on Atmos Scarab, um, Atmos Scarab actually doesn't have any variants, by the way. And um, it has one of the most interesting effects, which is 5% chance to cast level 2 Amplify Damage on Striking. So Amplify Damage, if you're unaware, is a Necromancer curse, and it gives double damage. So anything that is under the effect of Amp Damage is taking double damage from your attack. So if you're doing 1,000 and he is Amped, now he's taking 2,000. Um, very deadly ability and something that you can use with a lot of physical damage attacks even attacks that might not necessarily seem um like they would be able to take advantage of amplify damage um so for instance this one in particular is five percent chance to cast level two amplify damage on striking so you have to actually hit the target with a melee or a spell i mean i'm sorry a ranged attack melee or ranged attack and of course we've also got 20 percent Bonus to attack rating, which, again, kind of implies that it's for a melee character or a ranged character. Uh, 40 extra poison damage, which would be a nice tack-on to um, your melee and ranged attacks. 75% poison resist, which is ridiculous. Um, attacker takes damage of 5, which is kind of pointless. And they, they always throw on that light radius on there, which is always beautiful. Just, just I don't want to be able to see. Now, the next amulet on our list is the Rising Sun. Um, the Rising Sun is very focused around fire, all right? So um, Fire Absorb is on here, um, and it actually varies depending on your level. So um, at zero, it is level, you know, it is zero, and at level 99, it is 74. It gives point zero point seven five per level up to level 99, and of course, it's level 65, so you're never going to put this ring on when it's at zero. Uh, sorry, ring, amulet. Now, plus two to fire skills is an interesting plus because it gives plus two to every single skill in the game on all characters that have anything to do with fire. So, you know, that goes for Inferno, Firebolt, Meteor, Enchant, um, Volcano, Fissure on the Druid. You know, it goes for the, um, uh, the Holy Fire on the Paladin. That goes for the Fire Claws on the Druid. It goes for the, you know... Um, the fire traps on the assassin, you know, it's it's very kind of universal in the way that it works because it's all fire skills, basically on all characters, but it's only fire skills. Um, so you know, if you were making a fire am uh, a sorceress or a uh, fire trap assassin or a you know fire claws druid or you know that sort of thing, this amulet could be very useful to you. Um, obviously, it stacks on fire damage. Replenish life is always nice to have around, and then that fire absorb kind of like goes with the theme, gives you a little bit of a chance to 
you know, suck the fire in and actually heal yourself. Um, and then 2% chance to cast level 20 meteor when struck um, kind of implies a melee character. Um, because, you know, if you're in the thick of it and you're getting hit, um, you're going to have a lot of level 20 meteors fall down on targets. Now, obviously, level 20 meteor doesn't come with any synergies, so it's not going to be as amazing as, you know, a max level meteor that a sorceress is casting. But still, it's just extra damage added to your uh, to your repertoire. And um, there's no variance on the Rising Sun either, as far as stats are concerned. Um, except for the level of the Meteor. Um, so the level of the Meteor can vary. I believe it's as low as level 13 and as high as level 20. Of course, these items have all been hacked in, by the way, so I hope no one has uh, modified the stats. I'm looking at the the page here and it's not matching up it's saying that it's level 13 to 19 and for some reason mine is level 20 so a little, a little off there um, none of the other stats on any of the rings or amulets have mismatched with the page yet so um, the next amulet on our list is high lord's wrath um, high lord's wrath is a plus one to all skills with ias so it would be very good for you know zeal paladins or fury um, you know, uh, druids, or uh, maybe you're playing a um, a kick assassin and you want as fast IAS as you can get. Um, you know, whatever the character is that needs increased attack speed, you know, this is, is a very nice one. Um, it has 1 to 30 lightning damage, which yeah, I'll take it. Um, lightning resist, which is amazing. Um, I'll take 35% lightning resist every single time. And uh, then we have Deadly Strike here. So Deadly Strike is a very interesting ability. Um, and Deadly Strike is essentially the ability to deal double damage. Um, it's a lot like Critical Strike. And uh, I believe they have separate roles. I'm not 100% sure on that. Let's see here. Deadly Strike will not stack with Assassins, Barbarians, or Amazons. Critical Strike bonuses. Although there is advantages to having both. When you have both Deadly Strike and Critical Strike, the game will roll for both bonuses first and if that fails the game will then roll for the other bonus our first bonus and then the other if the first bonus succeeds the second will not roll and if the second rolls um you will get two times but never four times so that's pretty cool so if you are an assassin barbarian or amazon and you do have um critical strike built up the deadly strike will actually stack um in a way not necessarily but in a way it will stack with you know um those abilities because essentially you're getting two rolls instead of just one so if you have like a 50 percent chance of crit strike and then it fails you're going to get the next deadly strike roll as well so great for melee characters uh ranged characters and that varies between zero uh, to 37 percent at 0 0.375 per level um so if we calculate that out real quick um it is a level 65 amulet, so 65 times 0 0.375, 375 is uh, 24. So you're looking at 24% um, deadly strike on that as soon as you put it on, and then it's going to cap out at 37 when you hit level 99. That would be an interesting way to add deadly strike to a character that doesn't normally get it. Like, say, for instance, you were making an enchant sorceress with a bow or something, and you wanted to throw in Deadly Strike in there, or maybe you're a... Um, I heard of somebody making a zeal sorceress one time. I thought that was pretty hilarious. That'd be a good way to get your Deadly Strike in there. Anyway, a very nice amulet all around. Um, definitely for a melee character in general, um, or a ranged character. Uh, probably not so much for a caster type, but if you were a caster type who wanted to be a melee character... <laughs> Perhaps this would be a, a way to help you out a little bit. Um, next on the list, we have the Mar Mara's Kaleidoscope. Uh, Mara's Kaleidoscope is plus two to all skills, uh, plus five to all attributes, and plus to all resistances. The only thing that varies on Mara's Kaleidoscope is the uh, all resists, which varies between 20 and 30%. Um, just in general, it's a very nice amulet. Um, there are, of course, better amulets out there. Um, I believe they call them GG items. But if I was level 67 and I found this and I didn't already have a um, plus to all resistances, plus to skills amulet, this would definitely be a placeholder until I managed to find something better. Um, and it 
probably would be there for a little while because I'd be crafting amulets and it would take me a while to actually get one that has uh, better stats than, than plus two and 30. So next on the list, we have the Seraph's Hymn. Um, Seraph's Hymn is right home. Um, and it is another plus two to all skills, and it is plus two to defensive auras, uh, paladin only. Um, now, there are not a lot of really, really good defensive auras that you want to be using, like, on a, a constant basis. Um, what am I on? A sorceress? So let's go take a look real quick at uh, what is considered a defensive aura. And uh, we're looking at, we got prayer, we got resist fire, we got defiance, resist cold, cleansing, resist lightning, vigor, meditation, redemption, salvation. So really not a lot of skills that you would consider using as like a constant. But of course, you know, having plus two redemption might not be a bad thing. Um, uh, the resists... Uh, salvation in particular could come in handy, so you'd be looking at plus four to salvation. Um, not really too sure about the plus to defensive auras. Um, I mean, it, it's there. Um, and then, of course, it has plus 50% damage to demons, plus 250 attack rating to demons, plus 50% to undead, 250 attack rating against undead. So, a very PVM sort of amulet, um, you know, player versus monster, um, because. Obviously, damage to demons and damage to undead is going to have no effect in PvP. Um, and you might end up finding something a lot better than that that gives plus two to all skills to Paladin. So maybe the only reason you would use this is if you were a Paladin who wanted to specifically increase your damage versus demons and undead. Um, which, granted, plus 50, plus 50, that's a pretty nice little bonus. And then you also get attack rating bonus to them as well. And then if you happen to be wielding a weapon that has bonus damage to undead or demons already, you know, that's going to stack... Not really sure about that one. And then last on our list for amulets is the Metal Grid, which is our highest level amulet in the game at level 81. Um, it's 460 to attack rating, 350 to defense, all resistance is 35, um, level 22 Iron Golem charges, and level 12 Iron Maiden charges. Now the variance on this is um, it can be between 400 to 450 attack rating, um, not really much of a variance there. It can be between 25 and 35 on the all resists. Um, and it can be between 300 and 350 on the um, the defense. So I think the all resist is probably the one there that people would be looking at the most. Um, just simply because if it doesn't have good all resists, you might not want to use it. Um, I'm not really sure why you would use this at level 81. Um, unless you were having a lot of trouble with attack rating, defense, and resistances. I feel like there's better alternatives, like for instance, um, Mara's Kaleidoscope is plus 2 to all skills, as well as having plus 30 to all resists. So I'm not really sure why you would choose a Metal Grid over, say, a Mara's, um, just simply because they're very, very similar, um, and this one does not have plus 2 to all skills. Um, so that 450 to attack rating and the 350 defense would have to be mighty um, enticing. Um, now, of course, it does have a level 22 Iron Golem, which is very interesting. And um, I'm kind of curious as to whether that would uh, stack with, um, like, if you were a Necromancer, could you have this um, and your other Golem? Maybe you could just use this to replace your Golem and just not even build Golems. I don't know. All right, so next what we're going to talk about is how do you find these rings? How do you find these amulets? Well, one of the best places, uh, bar none, to find this kind of equipment is actually um, Andariel. So I actually have a link open here somewhere. Here we go. Um, so Nightmare Andariel has a pretty good chance of dropping a Mantled Heal, a Nagel, Nozakin Relic, uh, Mahim, Oak, Curio, uh, Eye of Elich, Stone Jordan. Those are kind of like what you can get from her. Now, of course, you can get set set rings and set amulets as well, but for some reason, Andariel has a very high possibility of dropping rings and amulets. I think it's because, in particular, um, you know, when you're leaving Act One, they kind of decided, I guess, that you know, Andariel, um, you know, you you probably don't have very good amulets and rings when you leave Act One. 
it's it's one of the things that you don't find a lot of and they're usually pretty crappy so i guess they decided that you know hey andariel should drop rings and amulets which which is what she does um now in hell um hell and Ariel can drop mantle heal nagel gaheed's fortune which that's actually the gaheed's fortune's not a ring no gaheed's fortune is is the charm well, it's good to know that uh, Andariel can drop the charm. Um, Dwarf Star, Raven Frost, Nozikin Relic, Mahim Okakurio, Carrion Wind, Atma Scarab, Crescent Moon, High Lord's Wrath, Saracen's Chance, um, The Cat's Eye, Eye of Elich, The Rising Sun, Seraphim's Hymn, Bolcathos Wedding Band, Stone Jordan. Um, so, you know, in general, you can get a large majority of the rings and amulets from Andariel. Um, Hell and Daryl and Nightmare and Daryl. Obviously, Nightmare and Daryl is going to give you less, but um, Hell and Daryl is going to give you quite a large number of those. Now, obviously, as you can see, we have you know a large number of rings and amulets here. You know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rings, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve amulets. Um, and of course, any of these rings and amulets can roll set instead. And there are a lot of set rings and amulets. Um, if I were to fill up my inventory with all of the set rings and all the set amulets and all the unique rings and all the unique amulets, I'm not even sure my inventory would be able to hold them all. I mean, there's a lot of little... They are they were very little, but I think it would be close. You know, because we've got things like Cath and Seal and Angelic Halo and Angelic Wings and Cath and Sigil and, and Sivirb's Icon and Aetheris Collar and Tancred's Weird and Vidal Vidala's Snare and Arcana Sign, Talrosh's Abdication, Telling of the Beads. You know, we got all these these various rings and amulets from the various sets, um, you know, plus the unique rings and amulets. Um, and it adds up. So I hope this has been um, at least a tiny bit interesting. For you Diablo 2 fans out there, um, I, I do plan to make quite a few more of these. Um, the next one that I make is probably going to be something like... Um, I'm trying to keep it easy easy on me at first because, um, let's be honest, some of the larger items in the game are much harder to um, fit onto one character. In fact, there are quite a few categories which um, I am not going to be able to, you know, keep all together. They're going to have to be on multiple characters. Um like, you know, for instance, two-handed swords. So my next one is probably going to be something like um, unique boots or unique gloves or unique uh, belts. Um, and we'll go over um, each different category of uniques um, until we come to a, a close. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of um, Unique Items. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little